Good morning YouTube. Today is kind of an exciting day. It is springtime and I like to play with my car during the springtime. Today we're going to see Jim from JDM in Freehold and we are going to have my car dynoed to see how much power it's putting out now and then we're going to have some fun stuff done to it. We're going to get the new intake manifold from the 2018 Mustangs because the 2018 and 2019 Mustangs are significantly faster than the 2017 which is the Mustang that I have now. I love my Mustang, I'm not looking to get a new Mustang and this is the way that we're going to go with to make my car a little bit faster and then we're also going to need to do a tuner um, so then we don't have the check engine lights coming on and it's going to shift a little bit differently which I'm very excited about. So it's going to all in all drive more smooth faster and we're also going to dyno it when it's done and see how much power we actually gain from doing this process. So let's go to JDM and have some fun. We just got to JDM and we pulled in and there are a ton of Mustangs, a ton. And they're like, oh my god, they're super nice. This is like my heaven. Well, I mean, if there was a gym in the back, that would make it my heaven, I guess, but. So we just ran the car on the die now. It pulled 397. So now they're going to install the tuner and the intake manifold and we're going to rerun it and see what kind of power we pull. 2,000 years later. Oh, okay. So, first thing first. You can see the difference. It looks, it looks cleaner. Yeah, a lot cleaner. These are all OEM fittings. Everything is clamped. It's all like SAE hose. Make sure everything fits nice and tight. You can see the difference tight. between the other car too, with all the clamping. Yeah. So it all makes an incredibly big difference as far as safety. Now, if you see actually right back here, this is that EVAP bracket we were talking about. So we actually hard mount it, use a bracket that's billet machined. Okay. So because of that, we don't worry about stuff floating around loose under hood, never have to worry about, you know, rubbing it to a vapor hose which is not safe, so. Jim, I just want Chris, to introduce myself. How I'm you doing? running hey. around, nice to Kristen, meet you, how nice are you? Nice to meet you. Good, did you see the car? You sell the manifolds and everything? Yeah, it looks, yeah. Really clean. It looks awesome. It's, you spend a lot of time on detail stuff just to make sure everything looks good and then it's gonna last. It's yeah. Too. You know, when somebody sees that and they say, holy shit, her car looks totally different, you got the same thing, why does it look so much better? Right. It's because you came here. Right. You know? So, that's, yeah, I think he, he said he was gonna do another dyno pull. Cool. Today. So I spoke to Junior this morning and he said that him and his dad were up all night thinking about my car. <laughs> it's such a good feeling. <laughs> I appreciate that. And that's why I wanted to do the instructions with, with this install because nobody really has good instructions. Even something like an air kit, you know, which should. It's a popular. It's the first thing most people are going to do to a car. Yeah. The instructions, there's usually very, you know, little information, a lot left to kind of figure out on your own. So when we do installation instructions, we like to be very thorough. I got every step coming off, every step going back on, the modifications we made to make all the parts that we do work. So the uh, evaporative system, we relocate and actually bolted it right off the side of the airbox, which most aftermarket airbox are gonna have a flat portion like this on the back. So it's a pretty universal location. And the factory evap lines run along the frame rail underneath here going back. 
So he had to trim it short and then we heated up the line. It's like a hard plastic line. You heat it up and you press the fitting in it and then we clamped it so it's got a nice good connection. Everything's clamped. You can see all the squeeze clamps everywhere. We took apart this whole setup here. This tree here is a vacuum tree where it's actually got a restrictor. And so we want to make sure that everything acts as intended from the factory. Um, some people will just delete that and run a straight hose. We want to keep that functional and make sure everything's doing what it's supposed to. Um, but then also the connections, you know, just clamping everything, make sure it's solid and gonna last. So um, the, everything that we do, we wanna make sure it's gonna be right and it's gonna last. That's the biggest thing. Just like even with our race car, there's a lot of detail that goes into everything. And now if you're looking to add more power, like the pro charger, you think is definitely like the way to go? If you're considering superchargers, since you already have the manifold, the super, the pro charger is the best way to go. Um, there's other superchargers that replace the manifold altogether. So then you lose that. Right. Um, but the pro charger really complements what we've already done. So that that's, you know, the way I would go. Um, and just like that car and over it there. it looks like such a clean install. Oh yeah, yeah so very pretty. clean. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, they sound really cool at idle. They have the yeah. He started that when we were here the first time. He yeah. started that one out. Yeah. He, said that. he said that. He goes, oh, I started the car. Yeah, I like, they want fun. a supercharger, right? He goes, like, yeah. Everybody like wants like a loud exhaust, and yeah. then when you like add a pro charger, it's yes. like turn that exhaust down. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, that that would definitely be the way to go. There's a couple other systems like Vortec and Paxton. Pro charger is probably like the most complete and nicer of the kits. Mm -hmm. So that's the way to go. Um, and price on them all? Are they all similar? Uh, pretty pretty comparable. Most supercharger systems are around seven thousand for the kit, and then the installation is about twenty five hundred to install it. So it's it, it's a ten thousand dollar project out the door, mm -hmm. but it's it's something where you know you're literally going to almost double the horsepower output. You right. know it, that car made a little over seven hundred. It'll probably make a little bit more because we're making some more changes to it. Mm -hmm. But you know that that's a car that you can drive on the street and then go to the racetrack and run nines. Right. So it's that's awesome. Insane. Yeah, <laughs> it, the technology is pretty cool today. We're in the horsepower era. That is not in the '60s. It's yeah. Right now. temperature, tells you the idle trim, closed loop, M-Rocks, any torque that was requested to reduce torque. Okay. Um, this is the air fuel, and if you look at it across the board, it follows these two lines. That's what I'm commanding, and that's what I'm getting. Okay. So, it's like perfect all the way across the board. Everywhere in between here, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Whoops. You know, I'm asking for a, I'm asking for a 12.4, 12, 12, well, I'm actually asking for a 12.3. It's getting 12.3, 12.4, and that's what it's seeing right here, 12.3. Okay. So it's like right in line. So it's right in line, that's the air fuel ratio. This is the intake air temperature here. Okay. That's the degrees of throttle body. That's actual, that's desired. And then bring it up, 
you have your fuel trims, how much fuel it's adding and subtracting. So wide open throttle, we're less than 1% fuel. That means, that means that the fueling, the mass air transfer function that I developed is perfect. And it's the same thing here, there's your spark. This is your degrees of angle on your cam. If you look at the cam here, this is your intake cam and that's your exhaust cam. And if you bring it down here, when you're in lower RPMs, you'll see you'll have, you'll have 20 degrees here. And negative on that is actually advancing it. Okay. Okay, so the more, the more you can advance the cams down low, the more low in torque you have, the more zippy feeling you get from the seat of the bands. So you do that, and as you climb up in RPM, you see it starts to fade away. Uh -huh. Yeah. And now it goes to a positive number, so right. it's actually retarding the cams. So this way you retard the cams as you get up higher in the RPM and it makes more power. Okay. So you can see that's at 7100. And I took that run to 7300. Wow. That second one? Yeah. Well, the first two I did the 7500. Okay. Okay, and that's got your spark there, it's got your degrees angles there, your RPM there, it's your battery voltage here, how much the car is actually charging. And this is your MROCs, whether they're open or closed, you see them? Yeah. On means open, and if you go down to the beginning of the run, you see up top will say closed, or say off. Yeah. See okay. it says off? Yeah. So as I get into the throttle, this is how I'm getting into the throttle. As uh -huh. I get into the throttle, you'll see it'll actually open. So, as you can see, the tune is perfect. It's not adding nothing or subtracting any fuel. And it allows it up to 10%. I mean, right. basically Ford lets it out of the building 10% plus or minus. Uh -huh. I, I shoot for the zero mark. So that's the whole log there. Awesome. I'll get the car off the dyno and then we'll get to see the dyno number. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Nick said. He goes, they really do use it. It's got a kid seat in the back. I am. So, so that's cool. I'm going to get the car out of the way as I'll mm -hmm. actually do it. But you can see that you made 383 horsepower um, at the top end and this one here made 418. So you're looking at 17... Look at that 32 horsepower. 17, 32 horsepower more on this one. I'm gonna print the final ones out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about 40 horsepower more at the top end. Cool. So you should be able to feel you know, everything. We just got back from JDM Engineering and I want to talk a little bit about the numbers we got on the dyno sheet. We have my first run in red, it pulled 397 and then when it hit red line it was tapering off at 388 and then the blue line shows the, the upgrade once we put the manifold on and it showed a 428 it had pulled and at Redline it was 423. So overall I'm really, really happy with how the car feels. It pulls, it feels faster, it feels like there's better control. And I wanna say thank you so much to JDM Engineering um, for letting us be part of the process today and um, teaching us so much. It was, we learned so much about Mustangs in general, um, things we wanna to do to our cars next, which of course JDM will keep you in the loop with that. <laughs> Let me know what you thought of my video. If you learned anything new, comment below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification button, and um, you'll know when I have a new video coming out. Bye, guys. <laughs>